Director of the IU Philosophy Department. I am delighted to welcome all of you to the Philosophy Department's Distinguished Undergraduate Lecture Series. It brings a distinguished philosopher to the IU campus every other year for two public lectures and events with students and with classes. Today's lecture will be followed by a reception uh, in the federal room, one, one floor up in the IMU, one floor up and down that way. And we hope that you will all, all join us for the reception after the talk. Free food. Free food. <laughs> yes, free food. <laughs> and free drink if you're old. And well, and free drinks for everybody, but alcohol, alcoholic drinks if you're old. What? Uh, this is the second public lecture by this year's distinguished undergraduate lecturer, Professor Roy Sorensen from the University of Texas, Austin. Professor Sorensen has taught at the University of Delaware, New York University. Is this not working? On the phone, but ringing. Yeah. Okay. So, this is the second public lecture by this year's distinguished undergraduate lecturer, Professor Roy Sorensen from the University of Texas, Austin. Professor Sorensen has taught at the University of Delaware, New York, New York University, Dartmouth, and Washington University, St. Louis. And he is currently a professorial fellow at St. Andrews University in Scotland. He has published over 200 articles on a wide range of subjects and is the author of eight books, Holes, Absences, and Nothing have been an important focus of Pro Professor Sorensen's work. From a metaphysical standpoint, but also shading off into other areas such as aesthetics. He recently visited the University of Toronto as a visiting fellow in the Jackman Humanities Institute's year-long program on the theme of absence. And there was an interview related to that vi visit, which I found online. And um, in that visit, Professor Sorensen spoke about metaphysical issues raised by holes. He also spoke poignantly about the lived human experience of absence. I, I, I was really struck by this, by this moment in the interview. He was asked, during your career as a philosopher or your time as a self-proclaimed absence tourist, what has been your most profound experience or realization that relates to the con concepts of absence or nothingness? And he replied, seeing the absence of the Twin Towers af after the 2001 demolition following the 9-11 attacks was the most awesome spectacle of an absence. And I know that some of you here are probably not old enough to remember that change, but just imagine any major, major landmark disappearing from the world of your experience. Right, so he said, seeing the absence of the Twin Towers after the 2001 demolition was the most awesome spectacle of an absence. Their absence popped out of the skyline. When I lived in Greenwich Village, I looked to the Twin Towers to learn which way was south. The night after the 1993 bombing of the World Trade Center, the Twin Towers were merely blacked out. At night, this created an illusion of absence. After the 2001 attack, people were seeing a genuine absence. Today, Professor Sorensen will be talking with us about perceiving holes, and in particular about perceiving holes without perceiving what they are holes in. So I am looking forward to this pre presentation with great interest and curiosity. So please join me in welcoming Professor Sorensen. Hi, thank you. Um, so this is... Uh, So here's a, an old objection to uh, materialism. You see the rings hole. This happened in 1970. This is partly what's kind of interesting. It takes that long for this objection to come out. Okay. So materialism is saying that everything's matter. And so here's the, the basic argument there, everybody. You see the rings hole. 
The whole is an absence of matter. Therefore, not everything is matter. So, Charles and Waltz, was it through abstract numbers or is it, it's holes? That was, and then, so it's a very well written dialogue. It's very cleverly conducted um, and, and pretty, you know, uh, erudite uh, by David Lewis and Stephanie Lewis. And I recommend you open the dialogue. Um, so, what I'm doing is uh, got a surprise for you. I cheated. I put one ring on top of another ring. That's why I handed out the ring. So, if you want to see how it's done, you put one ring on, you have one ring to include the other ring so you can't see it. So, some people find it just easier to, I mean, you can imagine these things. It's not bad. That's mind bending, but the idea is that you can um, uh, think a little easier by manipulating things. So I sit around with the rings and look at them, uh, and the uh, the idea is we can then ask. So, so we we so there's the secret ring, and here's the riddle. It is the first time you saw the whole of the bottom ring. I have been trying to be a little empirical on my philosophy. Oh, well, this is a good thing. So if you think this is the first time you saw the hole, the bottom hole, you just read. If you think it's not the first time, raise your hand. Slightly more. It's significantly more. Um, it's a, so another way I can ask the same question. I did it. I wanted to have it a, be a secret. Um, so I'm trying to, I'm not interested in when you first knew that there was a whole, a, a whole bottom there. I'm not interested in that. It's perceptual knowledge. I'm not interested in the question of whether you believed, when you believed there was a second hole. I'm not interested in perceptual. I just want to interested in when did you first see it? So sometimes you see things and uh, you may have no beliefs at all. You may, well, what is that thing that you see? Yeah. This is sometimes called non epistemic scenes. So epistemic scenes, it's seeing involving belief. That's a technical term. We'll be that important. But it's a riddle just about what, you, what you're seeing. Another way I could ask the question now that you're, you've been uh, introduced to the existence of the secret hole is if you just try to hide it again. So take the ring and try to hide it by putting the other ring on top. Do you succeed in hiding the hole? You can hide the ring. That's true. But can you hide the hole? Um, and uh, some people think that uh, maybe you can, and some people think that you can. Uh, so, uh, or they think that this is a, so we do have a way of hiding the ring. You put another ring in front of it. Does that also suffice to hide the, the bottom hole? That's the speech. So, yeah. um, okay. So, um, there's, um, so the materialist, especially in these dialogues, has an opinion on these. This is the first time that you saw it. He you thinks you can hide the hole. Because the materialist says that with uh, the way you see a hole is by seeing uh, what is a hole in. That's called the host of the hole. And they're trying to they do that because they say, well, it can't be the case I see the hole by the light reflected off of the hole, it's not reflecting any light. Or the light emitted from the hole, it's not emitting any light. It's not refracting any light. It's not doing anything with light. The only thing that's doing anything with light is the ring. 
So the only way to see uh, the whole of the ring is somehow to be seeing the ring. Okay. So the idea is, oh, it's, it's somewhat like the only way you're going to be able to see my fist is by seeing my hand. And you may doubt there's anything new that has come into existence when you got it, like they go with my fingers. Yeah. Okay. So does anybody want a, a kind of clarification of what the riddle was? And what the, I mean, it, it's good if we kind of stay on top of what's going on. Yes, go ahead. So the answer to the riddle is that you didn't see the bottom hole until you saw the bottom ring, or I, I think I that's what the materialist would have you do believe. That's what I formerly believed. But I answer no. So I'm disagreeing with some of you. Happily, I think I'm only disagreeing with the majority of you. Uh, so you saw the bottom hole before you saw the bottom ring. You can see my anti materialist credentials are emerging. Uh, you did not realize you were seeing the bottom hole. You reasonably believed you were seeing the whole of the top ring. But I played a trick. So that's so I have I have the anti-materialist position. I'm also changing the views. I was reluctantly agreeing with the materialist despite my anti-materialist. So there are people who um, so there's a book uh, called Holes by other opponents of materialism. They think that they are abstract objects. Uh, and but they also kind of reluctantly agree. Yeah, the only way you're going to see um, a hole is by seeing uh, what it, it, the host of the hole. So um, <clears throat> you could have various thoughts about you know there's going to be like which thing has the hole. You might say maybe the hole jumps. From one thing to another, the bottom hole maybe depends on how you view it. So it is like, so there is an interesting appearance reality distinction for holes. Uh, so this is, so, um, so now we're, I sort of uh, have a handout which is tend to kind of correlate with what I've been doing here somewhat. So I've gone over the, the issue. A little puzzle I'm getting going. I've done it informally. I'll try to make it a bit more rigorous as we go on. So that we get so we're at boom number one. We are you supposed to uh, I see the puzzle. I understand it. And then we we did our competing answers. So I'm doing this in a way because I had this methodology of writing triad because I, I had my students write it in a certain format and they said, so, well, why don't you do it in front of us, write your own paper? I thought, yeah, that's a good idea. And I've been writing it in front of them. So I have to do, I'm doing something. And so, well, why don't you do it this way? This would be the most educational thing for us. And so I've been doing it. And so these students are, have been instrumental be constructed the handout because this is like how I wanted them to write their essays. I'm trying to defeat chat GPT and say because it's terrible at this sort of stuff. And so the idea I won't have to worry too much. It's, it's not a very good anyway. So here's the um so we have uh, so we have this clarification. It's an issue about perception. It's not about perceptual knowledge. It's not about perceptual belief. So some of the ground rules, and you can see a hole without seeing that it is a hole. Um, you might mistake a hole as a black patch. So some things are genuine holes. But here's showing you one. It's a bunch of All right. So, and then some things are not genuine holes. You know, there's some things, things that they look like holes. They're not. You ever saw like a rabbit, Roger Rabbit, that cartoon, and people would just peel off the hole. You know. So not a real hole. That was a fake hole. 
So it's an there's an appearance reality distinction. Okay. So uh, yeah. incidentally, there's more uh, I've been ruled behind them. I got these biking gloves. I was very oh I want them to be nice and cool. So I got them on the internet, put them on there. Oh uh, yeah, I'll be out in Texas bike riding. And I can last a little longer, you know, swollen off in prostration. So there it is. And then I was riding along and they did feel kind of cool. But going. And then I kind of took a closer look. Those holes. Well, actually, maybe I should take it off. Is it pretty nice? Are they holes? Fake holes. <laughs> They're fake holes that were making me feel pretty cool. <laughs> they don't make the iron stuff. So, so there's a lot of that on the internet, incidentally. So I, I'm buying uh, I buy products. So one thing you buy is like loose leaf paper. You buy loose leaf paper and often what they do is they have it in a trans, they have a stack of it, it's like a ream of it. And you buy a stack and there's transparent, the trans, it's, it's just transparent. So you get to see the top sheet. This is was inspiring uh, part of what I was doing because I, I, this is where I was sort of was getting ideas. Is when I when you buy that and you are looking down at your ream of uh, loose leaf paper, not only do you see the hole in the first page, but also holes in the subsequent pages. The depth of the hole is not equivalent to the depth of one single sheet. It's a deep hole. So it must be you're seeing holes of some things, some other things. Um, so the idea is, uh, so I thought, well, maybe I am seeing, so although the top sheet blocks your view of the subsequent sheets, it doesn't block your view of the subsequent holes. Ask a question. Look like your, your hand was wanting to go up. And it's like going to go on its own there. Yeah, go ahead. Like we got, we've got this hole, right? Yes. Does this hole end once we get outside of the space of the ring? So that's, that's a good question. Uh, and so some of you, um, so what you want to do is, I'm going to borrow that. There's a, like a small one to show. So I, these are the opportunities to borrow them. So, so what you need to have, um, Let's see if we can make the hole get bigger. So it might be easier for you actually if you had, you would just keep on moving this until the apparent diameter was the same. It's like a telescope sort of okay. effect, but you can try it out. Just try it out and make yourself, and then you might be able to raise the question. So yeah, you have the right view. Use one on for it to do this correctly. And then the idea is, uh, so was it, what makes the, the demonstration work is apparent diameter. And I was being a little bit sloppy when I have just exact duplicates. It would work a little bit better if I was playing tuned enough. But I, the Amazon.com has many things like this, but it does not have this like request that the diameter be just what apparent diameter is when they're interposed this way. It's just, I try, it doesn't make a difference. You think that makes So you might want to hold on to it. Uh, so the, you might wonder, well, well Maybe I'm making a pretty big hole. Uh, so when, so how big does the hole get to be? Does it get to go beyond the borders of its host? Okay. Yeah. So the way, and the way I was describing it, I was saying, well, you so because you in the reading of paper, I think maybe you were saying this. You know, there's something interesting about that top sheet. It's got a mighty big hole. Mighty deep, more deep than the, the, the piece of paper. So that is one kind of analysis you could say. I am seeing that I'm seeing the hole in the top sheet. I'm not seeing the holes of the thing below. Uh, so that would be a good um, rejoinder by the materialist. I think that's that is a worthwhile uh, objection. Um, the uh, but uh, to complete my the little concern I have about uh, big holes um, is that um, uh, 
go to the bookstore and I was going to get one of them. And then I thought it was, it was just plastic and it was, but then you take the top feet, there was no hole in it. It was just there to make it look like it had holes. It didn't have holes beneath. So the top sheet was actually just sort of a photograph of the sheets. So in uh, in epistemology, this is I got Geyer. This is again a Geyer theory. I justified true belief that there are holes, but I did not have knowledge because I could not see any holes. What I saw was just a photograph. I mistook a photograph of a hole for a genuine hole. But we can see that's a problem. So, um, and so, um, so some, and then what I'm interested in telling is just seeing the whole rather than infer the whole. Right? So sometimes like maybe you, you see the trees moving around, you say you see the wind. You see the trees move around and then you indirectly see the wind, right? So then we have, uh, So I'm trying to talk. I'm interested in this kind of direct perception in holes. Seeing the hole itself. So with all that in the background, do you see the hole in the index card? Not see it. Uh, is there a hole in the index card? You had justified your belief. Mm -hmm. All right. So good for you. You're, you. Now you see the hole before you merely inferred the hole. So we, I'm just trying to reinforce the distinction. Um, to, also to reinforce the distinction between this appearance reality dimension, I, I gave you the lifesaver of Vince that had the hole in it. And so this is intended to make it more vivid because I want to have, so we, in philosophy, you like to have common sense on your side. That's good. So I think common sense is on my side when we say you see holes. If you're walking along and someone's left the manhole cover off the hole, and you go, whoa, I'm not walking down, you know, I'm gonna hurt myself. And you walk around, right? Because uh, that's a hazard. That's a deadly hazard. They shouldn't leave the manhole cover up. Yeah. So you're seeing the hole, and it's important you see holes. The other thing is you can feel holes. They are, they're multimodal, right? So with the lightsaber and mint, you can feel it with your fingers. Better yet, you can feel it with your tongue. You can put it in your mouth, and then you start getting a contribution by the perceptual psychologists. So not only they say, you know, you see holes, and it is an illusion that the hole is bigger in your, when you put it in your mouth, it seems bigger. If you had uh, a, a tooth removed, you may have noticed, wow, that seems like a pretty big tooth I lost. Or you have a cavity, it seems big, your dentist says it's not as big as it seems. Things are exaggerated in your mouth. Okay, It's an illusion. So you are sensing something, but you, it's an illusion about the size of the thing. So we need to have that in the background too, because you might be saying, well, there's a certain maybe what's going on with this sort of there's an illusion that you're seeing the whole, you know, that, that could actually happen. And that we need one kind of movie and what they're doing. So all right. Okay, so here's a whole bunch of illusion stuff. You can get like interesting things all from Amazon comic book scary entrances to one's house. <laughs> that there's but there, you know, there's the illusion that there is it's not like there's a hole and you're mistaking the properties of it. 
Here, the problem is about where there's a hole at all. There isn't any hole at all. It just looks like that's, it's, it's, it's you know, that's about the existence of the thing. Right? As we saw that I, uh, when I was looking at the loosely paper, there was, it was a photograph, and on that photograph, there wasn't any hole, but uh, below the early water holes. So it was, I mean, an interesting amount of advertising actually kind of works this way. It gives you a, a falsehood that God gives you the truth. It's somewhat like the my security system, and I should have taken these photographs with me. And I have uh, my house, I got this house, and it has a gate, and the gates are kind of made, I guess, so that you can exit okay safely. There's one, one kind of, you can only lock from one side of it, even though there's something to hold the lock that doesn't connect to anything. So what I was worried about is that someone would walk up to this gate and, and think it is unlocked and then try to go through the gate, which is the kind of close the gate. But I noticed it had like this little thing where you could hang a lock, even though it didn't connect to anything. I hung the lock. It, the, this lock wasn't working that well anyway. I just put it there. And then from the street, the gate looks locked. The gate is locked from the other side. So they don't want them to go. So I can't hear security services. Okay, so that's an interesting, interesting thing. That's a, uh, okay. So you entice people into, you give them a pulse so they can believe the truth. So, right. Okay, so let's see where else we got here. So why is this so interesting to me? Uh, well, you know I'm an anti-materialist. So what I want to do is to uh, show that, you, that these holes are kind of more autonomous than they seem at first, these materials. So I don't want to say, so you cannot identify, so if I'm right, and all this is controversial, if I'm right, then you cannot identify the hole with just the way the host is, like it is the shape of the, ho of the host, or the shape of the lining of the host. Uh, because it turns out you can see it without even seeing the host. What I'm, what I, I'm arguing for is that the real role um, in, is, is the host is merely a visual aid to seeing the hole. Sometimes you can see a hole by looking at another rig that happens to nicely frame the position of a hole, another hole. And that's how you get to see it. Uh, you might think, well, is it is it going to be crucial that the uh, that there be uh, that the visual aid itself host a hole? I think not. You can look have a have a very artsy one, and later later slides we'll see one where you just have like little fragments that are suggestive, and frame it, and it, but no real thing. I think that will also suffice. So I'm getting like more autonomy and trying to repeat various theories that have been put forth about what holes are. So the general mystery of all this is that you like to have some sort of, uh, unless you want to go and say, I don't see the holes at all. It's just an illusion of seeing them. No, nobody does this. Everybody says, yeah, see holes. And then they're trying to tame the holes to make sure that make the world safe for materialism. So you try to find some naturalistic way of explaining what's going on. So what I'm trying to do is like deepen this debate. So it's kind of in the handout, like new development in the, the whole today. So we have a, a discussion on, you know, I keep on moving to this dialogue between Stephanie and Lewis. They have their proof that materialism is false. It's like they're just, this is the, put in the voice of one of their characters. Um, the characters are Argyll and Bartle. And I think it's Argyll who's the materialist. And then and it's Argyll who's playing tricks, isn't that one? So what happens actually in the dialogue? So sometimes what you want to do is it's called stealth philosophy. So people get suspicious of oh, it's philosophical. It's like telling people it's going to be natural. 
So what you do is you don't tell them it's going to be philosophy. And then you just get them to say something philosophical. That's the idea. So what happens is they they have invited, uh, so Bartle invites Arnold for wine and cheese to sit down. He knows they're going to be talking about materialism and so on. And he's just sort of settling into the evening. And so uh, Bartle offers Arnold a, a slice of Swiss cheese and says, ah, uh, there, there are many holes in this slice of Swiss cheese. And Arnold says, yes, there is. And Barbara says, gotcha. Arnold has admitted the existence of holes. Holes are not material things. A counter example. So there's, um, yeah, so, um, so at one stage uh, with uh, Argyle does, he says, all I need, let me, let me think about what I said. Let me try to, all I mean is that the object is perforated. So I don't, I don't talk about you know, holes. Just, they're just perforated objects. It was Luke's talk. And then what uh, Bargle does is noting that, well, then what about like this cheese or beer cane dad will do? I didn't put the holes through loosely. You can count them. You can count the holes. One, two, three. So you need to have a difference between there being, if there's just one hole, you would have to say it's singly perforated. If there were two holes, You'd be saying it's doubly perforated. And then with three holes, you say it's triply perforated. So you'd have like three terms. Now, how do you define what perforated is? What is to be, say, doubly perforated? If you say it doubly perforated means there exists two holes in the thing, well, that won't do because then you're committed to holes. You can't define it that way. You have to say, that these are themselves primitive terms. There's this other vocabulary, this other word we have, which means singly perforated, that's just one term. And then there's another one that looks like the other one, but just another word, doubly perforated. Another vocabulary to learn, to, item to learn, triply perforated, quadruply perforated. These are each not, to, they don't, they're not defined in terms of holes, they're just their own primitive term. How many of those terms are you going to need, Mr. Arnold? He's going to need a huge number of those because you can have like a thousand, a million, you know. So he says that can't be, but how much time do you have to memorize your vocabulary? Well, time is short in human life. It can't be that I've learned millions of these predicates. So this can't be the correct account of what perforated means to us. What perforated means to us is just assholes. So uh, our goal uh, goes back and thinks a bit more. And then he, uh, he develops uh, another theory that the hole is the same thing as the lining of the hole. So just the smallest amount that kind of holes. That's why I put, took the rings to kind of minimize how much you. Uh, so they're Holes are the same things as hole lungs. And then the debate goes on uh, discussing whether that's going to be uh, a good solution. So, for example, one of the things you're concerned about, like, suppose that you start to uh, spin the lining around. Is the hole spinning? Uh, many people think no, but then how can the hole be the same thing as the lining? That's like one challenge. Uh, okay, so it goes on, it gets to be a TV. So I'm going to, here's another um, thing I'm going to try to press uh, even more. But, but actually, before I do that, let me just try to, since I, I want to show this methodology that I think is good for writing papers, I'll just explain what we'll be doing. So 
the methodology is this. You write, uh, you write your essay and it's an inconsistent triad. That is, you've got say, perhaps three propositions, it's a literal triad. And each one of those is plausible. That is, you kind of want to believe each one of them. But they're jointly inconsistent. They can't all be true. That's what triad is. Thus, a consistent triad. So the um, you know why why do it this way? It's because philosophy is pretty nebulous and pretty difficult because it's kind of nebulous. And what you want to do is to make it kind of clear what's what's at stake. So one way you, you what's the problem you want to ask? What's the philosophical problem? Well, here's the problem because I'm inconsistent. That's the problem. I, there's a small set of propositions that can't all be true, and yet I find myself believing them. So maybe I think that uh, self deception is possible. But at the same time, I think that if uh, the, the deceiver cannot believe the same thing as his victim. Because, so, you know, if uh, A deceives B into believing in a certain proposition, if A is the deceiver, he doesn't believe B. Proposition. But if it, given it's going to, we talk about successful self deception, then it would be the case, you know, you can't, and if it's successful, then B does believe it. But it's in, if A equals B, then you get a contradiction because you can't both believe something and it not be the case you believe. That's a contradiction. So many of you do think self deception is possible. And I think you're all inconsistent. And you should feel uncomfortable. And then you should start changing your mind about one of those three propositions. So the idea, I understand, that's a problem. You understand, and then what are we supposed to be doing? You say there's a problem, but you don't tell people what to do. Here's what you do. Change your mind about one of those things. Will it be an interesting change in mind? Yes, it'll be an interesting change of mind. Because I'm changing my mind from something I thought was very plausible before. That's news. So that's the strategy of these inconsistent triads. Try to condense this, this cloud of philosophy into a few droplets of an inconsistent triad. So you might want to read being in nothingness about self-perception and so on. It's pretty darn use. Yeah. But zero in and then fight. And the other thing the end you'd say is like. You may have noticed that you're much better at multiple choice questions than you are at open, you know, open questions. If you can turn it into a triad, it's multiple choice. All you need to do is to refute one of the items in the triad. And you solve the problem. That is what solving the philosophical problem is. I feel like I'm going to go out in the street corner. I, I get like a little preachy. Uh, I feel like, you know, handing out Bibles when I'm talking about trying. Right? So I, I tell you why it's been a personal experience because, like, I wasn't really very good at philosophy as an undergraduate. I wanted, I was like, I wanted to be good at it, but I was like at the periphery of like a dog, you know, waiting on the end of like smart people on the outside. And I, I couldn't get it. It was just like, and so, uh, and uh, continued to struggle. Uh, and then I uh, learned about this trick. So if, if you want to learn more, you've got Nicholas Rescher writes on how to do it. Strike the most systems. Other people have used the format. This uh, Rescher has a lot to say. And Rescher has the advantage of some philosopher. He tells you in a book, then he tells you the same thing in another book in a different way. So he's like very productive person this way, but and instructively redundant. So it's, it's good to okay. Um, okay. So um, what I'm what I tend to do is to give you the triad. Uh, the, the, so I what I why am I excited? Oh, I think I got a new puzzle. That's why I'm excited. Okay, so here's and so here's my here are the items of the triad. And then 
you know, I may mess this up because it may turn out that they're all the items are compatible and then, uh, -huh, back to the drawing board. Right. Or it turns out the way I have one thing that it's just not very small school. It's not really popular. The easy to get out of it. You want it to be difficult to get out of it. Right. So we have a principle of selective occlusion. Occlusion is just blocking your view of something. So exactly covering a post with a duplicate opaque post. So opaque, you can't see through it. Occludes the host without occluding its hole. So if this was made out, of, if it was made out of glass, the rings, then you'd be able to see. That's a bad way of occluding anything. Anybody want more explanation? I'm sorry to you like selective occlusion. Yeah, you know, since it's special terminology. I've already introduced them. I, I started talking about hosts. You didn't know about that word before we say some terminology. But you always want to kind of explain your terminology as you go along. How about are people who you understand what they're talking? All right. Selected. So it's going to be you're going to have a slogan, right? That hosts block hosts. Holes do not block holes. The bumper sticker. <laughs> and then you have a principle of whole fidelity that this the persistently visible whole of the occluded host is a whole solely of that occluded host. No share is no transfer if the whole sticks with its host. Anybody want more standard? And finally, post monopoly holes are seen only by seeing their hosts. And so the contention is if I've done it right, you can't believe all three of those. Uh, you got it right, you're also feeling, oh, but I do still want to believe each one of us. Then you're consistent. And I'm having a happy day. Right. Uh, okay, so anybody want more on the triangle? Okay. Then I spent a little time trying to reinforce it really is consistent. When my students write the paper, uh, they often think they've got something that's Inconsistent, and then like I'm a pretty slippery fish, and I find ways out. And they have to go back to the drawing board and plug the hole. That, that's what it is. Um, so then, what you so then the way these things tend to go is then you start to give more independent support uh, for each of the legs. The reinforce they plug out. These are each uh, pretty plausible. And so uh, you know, I, I keep up uh, the case. Um, for each one of those. Uh, some of the stuff I've already been telling you, uh, but I want you to be able to understand it. So, uh, so maybe what I should be discussing most is um, the one I want to kick out. The one I want to kick out is host monopoly. I want to say, you can see a hole without seeing its host. And it was true that it's kind of, there's a lot in favor of it. You know, you can see, you know, it's common sense and there's science examples. Like, how else would you see it? Because the, um, you can, you know, uh, how else do you, how do you touch a phone? You have to touch the host. How do you uh, see it? You have to look at it. When you hear a hole, what are you hearing? You hear this hiss coming out of a tire? Oh, I'm hearing a tire. Like, hear that hole in the tire. Okay. So, um, What is the solution? I, I kind of telegraph the solution is to reject that third item uh, to say that the there are more ways of seeing the whole than you're here to do. And then I provide like more support and I'm willing to do that. But I also wanted to stop just talking to you to kind of get more reaction from you. I have more slides uh, to go through, but. I want to see maybe any actions. If you want to hold on to host monopoly, 
and maybe guess it. You might write too soon that you tried to disprove post canonically by arguing a whole is seen, but just not perceived as a whole. Correct. You might think you thought you weren't seeing, you didn't realize you were seeing a whole, but that's what you were seeing. Um, um, yeah, so uh, you got it. Yes. A whole that you're not seeing the host. Does that also mean that you don't need to see the host for there to be like that means that there doesn't have to be a host to be seen there's a hole. Yes. But does that also mean that you don't need the host to have a hole? I uh I think they are metaphysically dependent on it. So the answer is no. I think that they you have to have the hole um uh, can't wander off by itself, it can't be unsupported. So this metaphysical dependency on its host. Mm -hmm. But it is not perceptual dependency. So I think you are metaphysically dependent on your parents. That if those two people had not been around, your biological parents, if those two people had not been around, um, you know, you wouldn't be around. You'd be, you're kind of dependent. You know, you're, they're essential to you. So, uh, but I don't have to see them to see you. And here we are. You know, I'm seeing you. And that's, you're not perception. It's not perceptual dependence. Any other questions about the kind of school yards? We want more slides. Yes, Kurt. So, if I have a cylinder, I want to turn it straight. Mm -hmm. See it straight on. Yes. See this one hole? <laughs> so, you're looking at a sill, or maybe, well, the, in these, the Lewis's tend, they're, they tend to, they talk about toilet rolls, they're not proud. <laughs> and if you're looking through a toilet roll, like, so what are you saying? It looks like you're saying a pretty long hole, right? Um, but you got a pretty long, and how long is it? It's as long as um, the cylinder. So you can have a deep hole, and maybe, but maybe you have a deep post. Well, suppose I cut the cylinder into two. Uh, I put the two parts together. I see one or two holes there. I think those are all, that's often a difficult question. and. You may wonder whether there's any gap in the manner. If you look at how people will make these tunnels, like the tunnels, they take segments and they put it together. Uh, so you, uh, so I think uh, some flexibility on how you might want to answer. Uh, is there a difficulty in, in me seeing the flexibility? Then if I take these sheets of paper and I fold them over, yes, that one or two holes. So I'm saying it's it is uh, two holes and there are two parts of it of the hole. Uh, so the paper together would it become a single hole? Insofar as we're counting them as just different, insofar as we're continuing to think of the segments as hosts, then they have they have their own holes, and then they can have a collective hole, and so maybe you can build up. So you might, so you can have like two different views. Maybe I've just seen two holes or somehow there are two, but also sort of one. And then you get some sort of stuff so about like sharing. I'm just wondering if I'm looking down the cylinder. Yes. Maybe there are many, many holes. Yeah, that would be an unusual way of putting it. But if you were to think for some reason you wanted to kind of split up the cylinder, so maybe you find out actually there's like in a, one of these tunnels they construct, the way they made it was they took many different segments, they put them together fairly seamlessly. But then you point out actually your segments. Uh, yeah, but then I can divide the cylinder in segments off. Yeah, and then you have the question is it sufficient by dividing them in plot that I have divided, I generate genuine host differences? You know, that maybe you have to be more than physically for something to be a host. Object that they're mentally mentally divided, so I can mentally divide the chair in half. But then you might think, well, I have really. Some people think that's not really to have created these two objects through my mental division. These are good metaphysical questions, and uh, my general strategy is to try to minimize how committed I am I am to those things and to and still sustain my my puzzle. Uh, the threat's going to be, and I think maybe you're getting around, is it turned out you could make 
the uh, so I think actually you you had a thought, well maybe the top one gets that has possession. Um, and then um, then I'm not and so what happens is well uh, it um, you not see the bottom whole book and it's no longer the whole of the bottom ring. Um, I think that that is one difficulty for that is that you could have two different viewers of what's going on. So if I, you know, if I see th this one and I want to claim the back one, you might think that's a bit, you know, selfish. Because right? you're seeing it from your perspective and this one is the back one. So you have a scenario where there are two viewers. So, you, so like each one sees a whole. Yes. I've seen one um, I'm going to leave it like that. But, so I want to have the, the competitive viewer. Maybe with your two eyes, if you're too clever, I pull out one eye and I'll roll it around there. I'm not going to do that today. But I, you know, maybe you could arrange one where there was a single perceived. That's an interesting idea. Um, and But I think it's going to be uh, sufficient to, uh, hopefully it deters you from um, giving all the credit to the top guy by realizing, but that's all a matter of perspective. I could have another viewer and it would be arbitrary to give credit to one rather than the other. Well, you know, whenever you're looking at it from like, one angle, yeah. if we're not pulling your eyes up, you're just looking at it there. Are you seeing one hole or are you seeing two holes? So I take it in this scenario that I'm, there are two holes that I see. I don't realize it's two holes. Uh, possibly, I mean, uh, Kirk had like was kind of agitating for saying, well, maybe there's also this collective hole. Possibly, you know, but I wanted to make sure that I still, the bottom one still got to be have a hole. So maybe all the bottom one was contributing to a composite hole. Yes. Would it be the case then that uh, if you would like to look on the both sides, like your mirror, that you would see the composite hole then, or would you be still? That's a good case. Maybe I don't have to pull the eye out of my, my skull. Yeah. Maybe I maybe <laughs> we decided I like a much a more humane solution to this problem. I hold it in front of the mirror and maybe that would be a but the, the mirror is it positions in a way that so are you kind of resisting it? Or, uh, the, the mirror thing is like I'm really not seeing a whole, I'm seeing a mirror image of a hole. It's not really so. Yeah, so it's gonna now you're getting into some of these. You know what's going on when you see through mirrors because um, it's not as straightforward as often it seems. So many people do think when I look in the mirror, I look at me, and then other people think, well, maybe all I'm doing is I'm looking at this image. And that's as far as it goes. So it's somewhat like looking, you know, at a shadow or something. I'm like, that's just a shadow on the ground or whatever. So, or a reflection, you might think that's just in the water. Like that. Uh, so maybe uh, I may have to pull my eyeball out. So, so, oh, uh, let me uh, make sure I don't neglect people in the back. Then. Yes. Okay. So say I hold two rings. I'm gonna get you bigger, bigger yeah, camera. Yeah, I need to stand up just so people can see you. I hold two rings like this. It looks like there's a third. So what, I, and this is sort of Kirk's question, is it looks like the whole Mariology is going to depend on the host Mariology. Is that your position? It's like, well, that's a third hole for like, okay, that's now its own state coast. Yeah, I think that, that, that does seem attractive to me. Uh, I didn't, so generally I'm trying to avoid extra uh, uh, commitments uh, as I go along, but so that might be correct about the way to go. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's Mariology. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, yeah. Well, actually, that is a respected position on Mariology. Right? So, uh, or if you're a Mariological Universalist, that's it. Anything. Go in. Yeah. <laughs> I just. Yes. Not quite similar to that. I take this flat piece of paper yes. and I roll it up. Yeah. Uh, have I just created a hole, a true host to the hole? Is this a true host? Is this a true hole? And then if I Take it back. Does the whole pop into and out of existence? And pops pop into and out of existence. I think the um, it, it may well be the case that it depends on how picky you are in the construction of objects. So some people are pretty loose. I'm in, I'm inclined to think it, it, you know, so. So common sense. So you, some people like 
we were talking about neurology. Some people just like any combination of things is an object. My nose and the moon, an object. Anything kind of, and then and then it turns out we're just simply interested in some of these possible objects. I'm not we're not interested in that object. Uh, and so uh, that's one kind of, and, uh, but common sense, that's not common sense to you. Common sense says, well, to be an object, they kind of have to be kind of unifying and uh, has some sort of integrity to them. And then, you know, they, they kind of lay on, and it's very hard actually to deal with that principle when you try, well, tell me more common sense. And what happens is that uh, under the cross-examination from better physicians, you start thinking, well, it's just getting so vague, it's kind of arbitrary. You win, Mr. Neurological Universalist. Well, I'll count everything in. Or some people, they go the other way. They say, well, you never get to combine it. You, you read Buddha sometimes, you never manage to get anything together. But, so these, that's part of you know, all this different neurology stuff. But I think the more popular view in philosophy is sort of the, toward the universalist if you're going to go to one extreme. And then you say it's probably for very practical reasons. I'm interested in some of the objects around the other objects. And that what makes it the obvious, I got sufficient practical interest in these things. I could talk about the others. And that's about as much kind of glue that's holding these things together. It's a more pure glue. Uh, so uh, maybe the right reaction to some of your cases is like kind of shrug. Common sense seems to be off. You like you were kind of taunting common sense because you right now you're kind of nice, maybe nice bit firmer, bending that thing up, building a case that's a, but then like you kind of unravel it pretty deep and then loose it. Uh, maybe it wasn't such a great solid object. So, uh, okay, so when you have an object or not, that's kind of hard to tell. Things have been controversial. Yes. That like we're talking about where like like a whole green space series of composite holes yes. on each plane. That seems to agree with the idea that the holes are defined by their hosts. From that do you think it's possible for there to be an empty space that is not a hole, but does not have a host? So maybe some giant hole, but no host. Uh, like, because holes are tied to their hosts, yeah. can we imagine like they're not being a host for something? Well, I think that's, yeah, I think you, and still have a hole. Yeah. Right. Um, that's, um, it seems that you are thinking that if it's a hole, it, there better be a host. It does seem like there's this metaphysical fencing. There's a parallel question that's of interest. It's, a, it's kind of close. So, for example, you go, think of shadows, which seem like holes in the light. And then you say, well, need there be any light at all? Um, so, the way you see a shadow is the right kind of contrast. But, but then you might say, suppose it's just entirely black, dark. Are you seeing that? So now I have no borders to it at all. In other words, do you see in total darkness? As when you go to a cave, they turn the lights off at dramatic step. Everybody's gasped. Whoa. You feel sorry if you're blind and painted. They can't see the darkness. You see the darkness. So that sort of pitching us to, it turns out who needs light to see? Not me. I see me in total darkness. So that, so common sense is a little uncomfortable in that direction. On the other hand, it's a little bit like, how else am I apprehended? It sort of looks a certain way. It's dark. Um, so, that's somewhat, you know, you kind of, so um, I think though, if it's been a really, so because it's total dark, maybe it's not a shadow. It doesn't have any more stuff. So I'm inclined to think, well, I better have some host for it in order for it to be a hole. So I take away, so destroy the host, destroy the. Are holes then just a subset of empty space in general? It can't be the empty space because space uh, doesn't move. So the uh, so the hole seems to move, but the the positions that these coordinates in the space they're just locked in. This region of space 
that just got there. And so that's one, you might say, well, maybe it's just the space, but then the problem is they move. Um, and then I think mean, even more to turn. So this is just translational motion. Um, but then if it turned out, could you have ones that rotate bubbles? So then you're spinning your, your toilet roll or whatever. So if we raise that question, maybe you can rotate them. Maybe. To get a better understanding, think about holes and light shadows. Um, so if it, if it turns out that um, you got a, a light and then there's a, uh, you've got a ball right, and it's casting this round shadow. And then you start spinning the ball. Do you spin the shadow? The way, the way it looks on, it just looks like a, a round circle. The ball is like, but it looks. Is the shadow spinning? Anybody in favor of shadow spinning? Light source. Light source and like if it's spinning, yeah. So, so just make it clear, we positioned it so it we can't tell if the ball is spinning by the shadow. Most people don't want it to spin, yeah. So, now suppose you, you drive a nail on the wall so that something sticks out and then have it rotate. Is it spinning then? So now, in other words, you can see the shadow is protuberance going around and around and around. So it sort of looks like it's spinning now because I have this asymmetry in here. Is that a spinning shadow? Something's spinning, right? Was the shadow of the nail it's going around and around? You agree that the shadow, the shadow of the nail is going around and around? Yes. But then what about the ball? The ball's just staying where the ball shadow just staying where it is. That actually is some people do answer that way. So a keel bar say a bird beside that's their answer. My answer incidentally is it's all going around. Just follows the the way to determine the motion of the ball is just. A motion shadows to look what the host is doing, just follow along. So, uh, yes, just wanted to follow up on this. Uh, your suggestion a uh, little bit of science fiction example uh -huh. of what uh, sticks. Have a sticks uh, to have a host on the hole. If people, so what's going on with space? So on a subsidible conception, which seems to be what they really are doing, despite my side of what he says, he's like, he's got this extra substance there, space. Then it seems like, yeah, you should be able to get, if it's a substance, maybe it does have a hole. That might be correct. I don't know enough about whether, how well it qualifies as being a substance. Um, people incidentally in, in the Middle Ages, they did, Prior to this, wonder about where there are holes in space. Uh, Thomas Bradwardy um, is, is one of the things they debated. I have a hard time following what's going on in these debates. I don't know about the background. So give me something that's a good candidate for being a host. You know, and then I think I'm going to get a hole. I, I get a candidate for having a hole in it. Uh, yes. This isn't from the scene. Oh, anybody want to follow up on that question or? Or am I uh, am I out of the wormhole? No? Yes, go ahead. Um, Maybe somewhat well. tangential to Kirk's question. Yes. Yeah. A matter of like, I think my issue with you rejecting post monopoly is uh, a matter of seeing, right? Um, there seems to be a bunch, a lot of. Well, I can't say a lot of empirical data suggesting that people do see holes in hosts, but I mean. I think you go up to anybody on the street and uh, you ask them, can you see holes without seeing what their holes in? They'll say, what are you talking about? Like, no, they're holes in something, right? It's only whenever you have some 
theoretical framework supporting that, uh, that you can make the claim that, yeah, holds uh, without saying that they're holding something. And uh, I think your answer to Kurt sort of like uh, supplements that, supplements that, you know, give me a host and I'll show you where a hole is. And I think that's a common sense understanding of um, at least our perception of holes rather than any, uh, whatever you want to say about the metaphysics of holes, I, I think that's uh, different, but actually perceiving them, I think many people would want to hang on to host monopoly and say, no, we can only really see them by seeing the host object. Yeah, so um, uh, I think there's some loyalty to it. So that's why I'm hoping that, but when I was surveying people just informally, I, I generally get a majority say, yeah, I, this is old news. I, I did see the the, uh, the whole I didn't realize that was saying. So um, then, then this is good. Then they have to choose. Yeah. Yes. Just out of curiosity, despite the fascinating differences, we usually have easier time to think to holes when we have a very um, as a, as a host that looks very much as a substance of some kind. Uh -huh. Like if I like making holes by smoking, right? Then you have to see yeah. it. Uh -huh. Or you see the whole, a hole in a, in a cloud. Right? Yes. But same, you know, seems very difficult to think that there is definitely look like a host, I, uh, a hole, right? I see right. it. But what, uh, where, where is the host, right? Is there a cloud or something that's actually possible that we can fly together? Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. an illusion. So I'm not sure in that. Case. What do you think of that case? Uh, so, uh, generally, uh, when common sense shrugs its shoulder, I want to shrug in unison. So, I want it to be that um, it, uh, as well, you know, when you have some doubts about whether you really got an object, you know, is that, that cloud thing, is it really an object? Start thinking about it, maybe it isn't. And then you think, well, so goes the hole, perhaps. It would be, I better find something for it. Yes. Just so, yeah. but in this case, we are, we tend to be more sure that we're seeing a hole yeah. than we are sure about the object. Uh, we have, they, uh, that's nice. You know, we, okay. have, we have already Good. visited the, 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 the hole. Right. Yeah, yeah. The hole is there for sure. Right. We're not sure about the object. But Good. In this case. Right. Okay. Uh, that's an excellent point. Uh, I like that. I haven't thought about that. Is that. Um, what about my different? It, it seems like maybe I'm more flexible on whether the host than I am about the whole. That would be more of a difficulty, I think. For uh, but it's, a, it's, it's got a lot of people going to be uh, sweating on that one, I think, because the materialist is going to sweat because right? he thinks, well, maybe I, he's showing that I think there's some independence. So you got like, more gearing than I am on this, uh, and I hadn't thought about that. That's an interesting uh, kind of challenge. What about differential? Yeah, uh, confidence on these things. Um, and you might think, well, you know, Sorensen's just like been a little bit too timid. That what he's like saying, oh, tie me to the host, you know, the I need to have the host for my home. And then you're saying, well, look, it, maybe there's an opening here. And then we could have these holes liberated. And you will look for some way of freeing yourself from the materialism. I'm handing it to you on a silver platter. I, I think of it, that's an attractive invitation. Yes. Uh, good. Because um, all you need is actually, I think, I, I, you know, I have always insisted on it, but you can have like suggestive shapes that sort of just look like they're you know, sinking, you know, even there, but I generally want the NASA to really be that holy. Yes. Going off what they were saying, I'm inclined to think of a host as more than what you're defining it as, as in not just the space surrounding the hole, but also the planes in it. And kind of making the, the host what you call like a visual aid. And through, with that like definition in mind of a host, yeah. I'm curious as to if you propose the same problem in 2D space where there is no planes underneath. Um, in that case, would you arrive at a more materialist answer? Because once you cover up, you know, the space surrounding, there, there's no space underneath. And in that case, you can't really, not just like know it's a hole, but is it even a hole at that point? 
Yeah, like we put, it's kind of weird to think about like in one point and two, all this kind of completely overlapping, like occupying the same space. But that is pretty challenging. So you have, uh, so I wanted an occlusion case, and then but you're removing an extra dimension for me to maneuver around. So that, that makes it more difficult for me to understand what's going on. Um, so somehow they have to be these things that are in the same place at the same time. And sometimes we sometimes do talk about that way. We talk about the the um, the copper that makes up the David Hume statue, and then the statue they're in the same place at the same time. Uh, so in some things it looks like you do have things, you know, uh, and then you might think. So uh, you know, some people have uh, that there could be uh, conjoined twins. Sometimes they're just like join, maybe just the leg overlaps or something. Other times it's like leg and an arm overlap. So I'm making them overlap and then like, maybe you're a perfect conjoined twin. Total overlap, right? Uh, many people don't think that that can work. Can't have the total of the flat. But it is exciting to think that you might be deserving of two votes. I, I guess. Yeah, it just seems like that scenario makes you more likely to arrive to the material sensor. Uh, and also might make with the tribe more consistent in the sense that um, if poles are only seen by seeing our hosts, and that you're always pretty much the space we occupy going to see the host that includes. The space beneath it, um, and that makes it you know more compatible with like selective inclusion because the, in that case the only case where your the whole is being covered is like examples where you show like the the faux holes like one search like a black dot or something. Uh -huh. um, so you have like uh, when you. Usually when people say I can make it more consistent, that sounds good. But with me and my triad, I, that's bad. So we, you were saying such a nice friendly way. <laughs> so but like, oh my God, I mean, you know, you know if, if you find a way to make all these come out true, then I have botched my triad. So that's the, so you, you speak gently. But like, uh-oh, uh -oh, little alarms are going off. Uh, so I'm not sure. It sounds like, is it an objection or, uh, or a solution, maybe, a, your own solution? Yeah. It's an objection. I'm still not sure if I, I thought it out enough to bring uh, it to it. Yeah. Well, I have I have kind of a thrown on the loop on the, if you just try to get one dimension, that that part of it, I was kind of, I was intrigued. But that's uh, it's not, it's not following entirely. Oh, yes. Yeah, so once we have denied host monopoly, mm -hmm. I'm left wondering what it takes to see a whole. And, and in particular, you know, you said so far why it takes, what, what it's, you know, wherever it is, it takes uh, to enable us to see a whole. So I think about examples like, um, <clears throat> I don't know, I've got um, mile long two by fours. Uh, and I've got a square out of mile long two by fours. <laughs> and I think if on your view, there, there's now a hole. Uh, it's, you know, a mile square hole. Yes. And now I'm on a tower a quarter mile up, you know, six inches from that bottom two by four. Now, the two by four is like set on the, set on the ground vertically. Uh, right? And I'm on a, on a quarter mile up high tower. Uh, it's set maybe six inches away from that bottom two by four. And Katie's on a similar tower just on the other side. Uh, and I'm looking across. Uh, I can't see any of the frame. Uh, right. Am I just seeing Katie? Am I seeing the hole? Am I seeing part of the hole? Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, what does it take to see a hole once we deny? Yeah. Well, I think this. Is, yeah, down. these are. This is a good objection. Uh, so, uh, first of all, I wanted to. I was being very sketchy about the seconds. I just want to show you this work of art just to get over what way you can. I thought this is where you're going to go. I think you didn't go this way, but I would just slide all you down the slide. I want to show you the slide. So, this is an artwork looking at eyeball. So I've got one of them. But look at how it actually gets shot. That very clever, all these little moles that are hanging there. 
and they're artfully done so that they give you, you know, uh, a certain shape. It's like that from the right angle. So that's the and suitably one eye. So you might, I was thinking, although this guy is very expensive to hire, <laughs> so I could hire him, is that you could make a whole something with this, and then all you would have is little scattered thingies. And so the um, and so it would look like a hole, you know. And the idea is that if you but that so far it would just be an illusion of a hole. Right, that would, too. Yeah, that would just be an illusion of a hole. And so um what I've been insisting on is, well, I do see, I need this metaphysical apparatus here. So I need something that, so you make all the little balls so that they perfectly occluded a genuine um, uh, hole. I mean, you have a, a real ring host and that that's how you see it. So although you saw none of the real host and you didn't see a host of any real hole, this thing you would see and you would be seeing the hole. No. Maybe I can so that's where I thought it was going. Now, what you're doing is like that, I think, is um, maybe going to be relevant. To... So, I was trying to reinforce. I put a dime down here. And so, the idea is I was trying. So, I was thinking that some people thought I don't see any. I don't see when there are two of them there. I don't see the bottom hole that somehow. It isn't really transparent. I only see the top hole sitting. So that's why I put a, a dime at the bottom. So, well, you see the dime. And so the dime is in the hole. So you see the bottom hole. That was the way I was arguing. And my impression is that you were pointing out, well, suppose I start to look more closely then at the thing, so close that I no longer see the ring. Is that same a hole? I think that is, uh, I, you know, not, that's, I, I've kind of got mixed feelings about this. So it should be the case that I'm saying, uh, well, you got to see a host, you know, so, or if that's a visual aid, I'm sort of leaning a bit. But then on the other hand, it's, it's, it's just sort of helping you. Right. It's great to think yeah. that something for things yeah. to would be, no, you see the hole, you just don't know you're seeing it. Yeah. So uh, then the other way is to say, Look, you really are, you don't realize it, but you manage to see it without seeing any of it. So uh, then it, uh, uh, how much remains of your visual aid requirement? Maybe it's loosened up. And maybe this is the better way for you to go, Sarnas. And if you're just trying to liberate your holes, then you don't want to you're make it weaker than the end. Um, and I think in more of your favor is that some people. I was in Canada, and I was talking. Some people live in holes, craters. They, they took a long time for these Canadians to figure out what's going on. Hey, we're living in a giant crater, and because of the Google stuff, holy smokes, that's where we've been living all this time. But then they see this hole, and you might be, and no clue it was a crater. And I think it's a big case for you. And then maybe it's the way I live. Yeah, you know, let's. Uh, yes. Uh, at the end of the day, isn't a hole just like a perceptual category? Uh, it seems objective. Uh, you might say something you discovered. Um, so some of the holes are too small to be perceived. Uh, some possibly are too big. So you can't get them. And then some are just dry. Uh, so I think that they're metaphysically there. So there, there were holes before there were any people or perceivers or sentient light or anything like this. And there will be plenty when there's no perceivers at all. So they can't be that dependent on us. But I think if you try to objectively define a hole without a, per a perceiver, it would be pretty difficult. And we might end up with a lot of the categories of things that we want together in our brain as holes. Uh -huh. But if you were to try to objectively define it, it would have to be separate. Yeah, so there's a, you might think that the phenomenon, phenomenology of holes is like a critical. I'm inclined to think not. So there are creatures that have no phenomenology, they're too primitive to have any. I think, like, why can't a carpenter be used to really good at making holes in your stuff? 
I'm not sure there's any consciousness at all. I think that they're seeing the holes. That's I think that's representative. But I'm not sure they have any consciousness. I don't. I think they can see things without any consciousness. Um, so, but I guess your point was okay. I'll, I'll give you no more phenomenology. Just let me see it though. It's not possible um, perception. But I, I don't have the. So you might have like you might be like think that Bishop Barclay was wrong for material things, but right for holes to be to, to be perceived for holes or to be perceived of whole. You might have that. Uh, my inclination is to think, oh, Barclay's all wrong about the, about the material things and also these, these immaterial things. They're just there to be discovered. Uh, yes. So um, on leg two, and also using this example, uh -huh. I sort of argue that the host, like the depth, the whole itself of animals, as like whatever the host is, like yeah. you have a sheet of paper. Yes. And it's in a stack, the top sheet of paper, and that like small hole in that sheet of paper is the hole. It's not a centimeter deep or however like yes. deep the stack is. Yes. But doesn't that mean then that, that you like aren't seeing necessarily the second hole here? If it should, yeah, so there's a so here's the there's a so there, it has two rings on it. There's a a top hole. It's a stacked hole. So uh, the, there's a top hole and there's a bottom one. I can't see the bottom ring, but I can see the bottom hole. How? Why is that the case? Because I'm seeing the ring and the, I mean, the, sorry, I'm seeing the dime, and the dime isn't in the top hole. Okay. That's that. That's what I was. So the dime isn't in the top hole. So does that mean something like, for example, a manhole? Yeah. If you look down in a manhole, that's not all one hole. Those have to all like. What if you took like different soil layers? Are if, those yeah. If you make layers? up the case that then it might be a composite hole. Okay. Um, and so and then it depends on what you know. What's your metaphysics? Are you making that into one object or not? Yes. So what is the difference between space and the space of a hole? Um, this well, the space in the hole is uh, I can so. There's this, there's the space in the hole, but then I just sort of moving it over. And there's different space things that are in the hole. But these are by a region of space, right? So, yeah. Just add space into itself. Like it doesn't change the space. Yeah, it just moves through space. And then different, so there's this one region of space that is at now, and then uh, okay. down there's a different region of space that it's the holes are surviving this process. So yeah. they're thinking the same things, but Space. So then whenever you're like looking through your computer and trying to design four blocks and you're not seeing, you know, the outside of it. Yeah. Then like that seems to be my perceiving the hole is contingent, you know, on the ring. And the hole stays like the same, like yeah. as long as I'm not seeing the ring. Yeah. If I move it up or if I move it down, and I'm still looking through it and I don't see the box, uh -huh. then the hole to me is like it's still a hole, it's still the same. But then this the space isn't like the space has changed as yes. you move that around. Yes. But you're saying that it's the same hole even whenever we move it through space. Yes. But it's contingent, like the hole to be a hole is contingent on our seeing knowing that there's a ring to make it a hole. Not it doesn't depend on our attitudes or our knowledge of it. Yes. Um, but like that there is a ring. Yeah, that depends on these these hosts. And then yeah, so um, so I was thinking it's metaphysically dependent on it. Okay. Um, and then I think the suggestion that I'm getting for people is that go ahead and have it metaphysically dependent, but you're just been chicken on your visual aim thing. You still want to have something like how it looks and frames it sort of nicely. I don't have to frame it per se. I could get close enough. I can zoom in so I lose sight of the perimeter of the movement. And I'm still seeing the hall. But just like without Theoretically, yeah. you have a ring, like like if they're kind of like motif to the idea. Well, well, maybe not. I, I'm not uh, so. Um, maybe uh, it seemed like a, a 2D thing to be okay, but not just the overlap. I have a problem with one thing being on top of another. It should be two. Well, join the club. So <laughs> yes. I, I guess I'm getting a little like thinking about like a really really big two by four frame. 
yeah. and that I cannot see this frame. But to me, it's like, I feel like I cannot, there does not exist a way for me to perceive that that is a whole. So the whole does exist, but if I cannot perceive it without knowing or like the knowledge or the idea that there exists a ring, how can I see it if I cannot make the determination that exists for three holes alone? What the only current to another kind of scenario is like I, I start paddling out the lake, the lake is kind of this whole well worn. And I, for a while, I can see the coastline. And I see this hole still, it's full of water, but it's a big, big and very transparent water. Paddle up further, I walk this side of the uh, coastline. And do I stop seeing the hole? I think the suggestion is no. You lost, I mean, you lost sight of the, the you know, perhaps the, the host, but you haven't lost sight of the hole. And so, um, this, the, the visual aid thing of like that is too strong a condition. It looks like we can somehow, yeah, that, and that might be our correct, because I see like the more daring position on like being pretty well in place, but something in that direction. It may be too conservative. Character. Well, it suggests that you don't actually have to, there just has to be the, the host uh, to see the hole. So you could have a transparent host, right? Uh, uh, so yes. You can't see the host at all, but right. you look in the right direction, you see the hole. Yeah, so you don't realize it. So uh, that, uh, I think that's another one worthwhile uh, you know, case to consider. Uh, so you're, it seems to be the, a, a pretty, uh, yeah, you got the hole, but it's like, Yes, yeah, so it's a terrible visual aid. <laughs> but the idea is, well, okay. Uh, but like, all you were trying to do is see the hole. And then, uh, so you kind of more evidence against the visual aid story. Or maybe, I don't know, some kind of reductive adversary. I mean, if you start out with that question, uh, you see a hole, if there's just a transparent ring in front of you, looking yes. through it, yeah. what would people say? Would they say, oh, like how we are at the point where we're embracing that inherent So um, it, it may be counterintuitive, but like you're kind of waving the red flag as sort of a color of bull. <laughs> I kind of do get it trying to attract it to uh, surprises. So I don't want it to be, to, you know, kind of just crazy. Uh, so that's. I think you think I've gone over crazy. I'm starting to be sympathetic to this. So, do I see it? Um, uh, I just don't realize it, or is it just an invisible hole? That's the. Uh, and so, uh, I think this is something I'm going to have to work out. So, thanks for your invisible hole. Your invisible ring. One, one, yeah. one uh, slight variation of that. You can imagine, you know, the, the things there. Initially, you're looking through it, um, and it starts to fade out. Yes, but it becomes transparent. No longer see it. Are you still seeing the hole, or does the hole fade? Out? Yeah. So uh, I think that's another uh, a good variation. I had done actually uh, one thing Amazon did have. I wonder if I put it into the slide show. Maybe I did. I had. Um, I took it in the. Uh, maybe I did. I didn't put it in, perhaps. Uh, I had the headless woman in Snow. It's a, it's a little it's called black art. So, uh, you notice that I had to wear a black shirt for my card trick. So, uh, and so, we have, that's the head. So she will do things like wave at you. So she has a, she's okay. Uh, so, and so the idea is like, do you see the head of the headless woman? But she's still got her head. But she's got a dark hood over her. And so you've lost the outline. I think some people are somewhat ambivalent about what it is. They didn't realize it first. And they said, well, I, it's, I still, I'm seeing the head sort of, or, or I still, I, maybe I do see the head. I think people are ambivalent about that. Um, so, uh, anyway, with the, the scenario I have is I just, I had these, um, it was this kind of lamp selfie lamp, but like you see the round ones. And then what you do is you 
I cleared my garage and it was real dark and then lit up. I took a photograph. And so I was interested in uh, an illuminated ring. And then, uh, although I didn't actually do it, I said, well, I know what it would look like if I had a second illuminated ring behind it, but which was even blocked by this one. Is it the case that I, then I would be seeing uh, the back hole? Or would I simply see the front one? What's interesting in the scenario is that's completely dark. So generally, if you have like something completely dark, you do not see through it. And so this seems to be another interesting challenge in case. Something you want to add into your objection. So I think we can squeeze one last objection. Well, uh, or maybe rescue. <laughs> you just have to be able to see through the whole consider the whole. Because like I sit right here and the guy looks up and sat back. And right now I can slightly see what appears to be a hole, but it's dark behind it. Yeah, see what he goes right at the end of it. It's not the same, but there's still a hole. Yeah. But so, it seems to be yeah, so seeing through is actually an interesting concept. So I think that you, so one, one possible solution is maybe I can see objects even though I, I don't have to see through them. So the idea that maybe I see that, I not see through the darkness, but I see things by default. And this is a situation that's arisen in other visual puzzles. Um, I don't want to detain you for the week half time, right? So, so we can talk later. So, okay. So, if you, I'll tell you all about because like I have a big, a, a big past with these overdetermined seeing silhouettes and shadows and so on. I have to talk a little bit, but I don't want to slow you down. So, anyways, we'll find this later. Okay. okay. And we can talk more upstairs. Yeah, we can talk upstairs, right? Okay, great. So, thank you. Thank you so much. I guess I could make this connect with anything is that uh, these will, uh, they're sugar, so they're bad for your teeth, but they, they're, um, if you crunch them in total darkness, they light up. You don't, you have a hard time believing this. It's a, a chemical plant. Uh, so uh, I used to, when I was a little kid, crunch them with my teeth. Not good for my dental health. I heard, and also you get it, you try to avoid saliva on them because you don't get as good an effect. Take some pliers, squash these things in total darkness, and it is amazing. They take some sort of luminescent, chemical luminescent phenomenon. So that's a bonus, I, and I have more of them. Uh, so, uh, so they, 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 oh, they're so pleasing at so many levels. Yeah. <laughs>